Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have discussed different methods of magnetizing materials or magnetic materials and we looked at electrical method. Then we discussed a mechanical method which we called hammering method. Then we also discussed induction method. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss another method of magnetizing material that is stroking method and in this case we are going to use a permanent magnet then we will be stroking a magnetic material several times either using a single magnet or a double stroke method my name is albert i hope you will enjoy the lesson by the end of this lesson i expect you to be able to describe how stroking method takes place, then describe single stroke method as a method of magnetizing a magnetic material. Then also describe how to use a double stroke method in which you are going to use two magnets to magnetize a single magnetic material. And then also you should be able to identify the position of the North Pole and the South Pole in a stroked material. So in stroking method, it involves repeatedly stroking a magnetic material bar using one end of a magnet. And to magnetize a material or a, a, a metal bar, then you need a magnetic material bar. In this case, we can take iron or steel. Then now what you do, you stroke one end of the material with one pole of the magnet. Like in this case, we are using the south pole. So you will only be using this south pole without interchanging the pole and then you will be stroking from this end here towards this other end. So if this is our iron all steel, you will be stroking it in this direction only. Once you reach this far end, you lift your magnet, you continue from the far end. So you, re you repeat the stroking several times and then the alignment of the domains within the material occurs during stroking and this result to magnetization of that material so while you are stroking this permanent magnet is going to create a magnetic field and that magnetic field is going to orient or to change the direction which is different in different domains in this iron or steel material and then all the domains will be oriented in one direction in this steel and that makes that bar to become a magnet and then in this case the magnetic material becomes a magnet and the end of the material where the magnet finishes like in this case we are starting from this point one here we are finishing with this second point here now since we are stroking with the south pole the end where this mag this permanent magnet finishes will acquire opposite polarity to that one of the stroking magnet so if we are stroking with the south pole, this is the south pole, then this end will gain north pole, then automatically the far end, point one here, will gain same pole like the stroking magnet. In this case, this one will become south pole. So if we get now this magnet out of this one, then the domains and the dipoles inside here will be facing in this direction. So that magnet will make the dipoles of this material to face in this direction, in the left direction, where this one will be our north pole and this one will be our south pole. But for you to identify which side is north pole or south pole, you look at the magnetizing magnet, the pole where the end of this pole of this magnet will acquire opposite pole and where the magnet begins will acquire same pole like the magnetizing magnet. So we have two types of stroking method and we are going to begin with the first one that is single stroke method. For you to use a single stroke method, then you need only one bar magnet. This is the magnet which is very strong. Then you need one material which you want to magnetize. Like in this case, we can say we have a steel metal. So this steel metal has ends A and B. Then we are using the north pole of this permanent magnet to stroke this steel from the right hand side to the left hand side of the screen like that. 
So what you should know or what you should note in this process, the magnet is lifted away after each stroke. So once you make one stroke, you lift the magnet up and then the stroking process is repeated several times while maintaining the same inclination. So this angle which you are stroking with must be maintained and again you maintain the same pole. If you are using North Pole, you will be stroking all through using the North Pole. And then from the ideas that we have just discussed earlier, this end A will gain opposite pole to that of the magnetizing uh, magnet. So this one will become a uh, south pole. Then the other end where stroking begins will gain north pole. So we'll have our magnet with end A being the south pole while end B becomes north pole. So the, we have some of the disadvantages of this process is that it provides magnets with one pole near the end of the magnetized material than the other. So in this case, where you are going to begin with, this pole might be at the far end, but the one where you are finishing will be near the end. So in this case, it means this idea will not become a magnet. Or you might find a scenario where, where you end with the, it, the far end has a pole, but where you begin from, the far end does not have a pole. So in this case, this is a very big disadvantage because this material cannot, be, cannot attract materials at the far end of this pole. So to avoid this, we are going to use a method we call a double stroke method, which is going to make sure that both ends acquire orality. So the other method of stroking that we have is double stroke method. And in double stroke method, we're going to realize that it's one of the most efficient method than single stroke method because it gives a magnet which has balanced poles. So in this case, you need two permanent magnets with either similar poles or opposite poles. But when we are going to use similar poles, we're going to realize that another pole will be formed in a material at the middle, which we're going to call the consequent pole. So if you use opposite poles, like in the first diagram here, diagram M, then you will be stroking from the middle to the sides or to the opposite sides like this. In side A and B, in A you will be stroking from the middle to the left using a north pole. Then it means this side will acquire opposite pole, that is south pole. Then in B, you will be stroking from the middle to the right hand side. Then in this case, you are using south pole. Then this end will acquire the north pole as the polarity of that material. So in this case, it means if you have the dipoles in or and the domains inside this a mag a magnetic material, all the dipoles will be aligned in a single direction like that, and they will be facing the direction of North Pole like this. So that material will be magnetized and the poles will be balanced at the ends of that material which you are magnetizing. So you can also use opposite polarities like in the second diagram here too. But now when you use opposite polarities, like in this case, like part A and part B, you have permanent magnet A and permanent magnet B and in both cases, you are using a similar pole, like North Pole in this case. So what will happen in A, the end where this magnet in A ends will acquire opposite pole to that of North Pole. Therefore, it will acquire South Pole. Then on the other end where you are ending with this side B, will also acquire South Pole. Then it means North Pole will be formed at the middle here. And the pole which is formed at the middle here, we call it consequent pole. Consequent pole is a pole which is formed when you are using stroking method and you are using similar poles to magnetize a material. So same pole will be formed at the ends of the bar and at the middle there will be a third pole which we call the consequent pole which will be formed at the middle of that material. So if you put this magnet now, which will be formed inside iron filings, there will be three points in this bar, 
which would attract materials. It will be attracted at the ends, and then it will also be they will attract iron filings at the middle. So the most uh, advantage of this method of magnetizing a material is that it produces magnets with more balanced pole distributions, and it helps to avoid an even pole placement seen in the single stroke method. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss the magnetization of magnets.